Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jonas Korlach. I'm Chief Scientific Officer at Pacific Biosciences and um, I'd like to thank the organizers for letting me speak at the uh, Lab Roots um, Virtual Genetics Week um, here this week. Um, I'd like to tell you in this talk about how long HIFI reads uh, can aid in high quality de novo genome assemblies. And um, uh, this talk will not be focused on COVID-19 related research um, uh, mainly, however, I did want to mention that high quality um, genome assemblies are of great utility to understand the virus and its biology. Um, here are two examples of a preprint and a published paper about high quality PEC bioassemblies in bats. And I understand it's maybe not exactly clear where the uh, uh, pandemic virus came from, but uh, there's a strong uh, indication that it may have been bats. And the paper on the right, you can see. Uh, is specifically analyzing the high quality PEC bio assembly for uh, the remarkable uh, abilities of bats to deal with uh, all sorts of viruses, uh, including coronavirus. Um, and then, of course, um, I also wanted to mention right uh, in the beginning that uh, model organisms, of course, are critical in virology research, and having a high quality genome for these model organisms, be it um, macaques or pseudomangabes and, and so forth. Uh, is critical to understand the immune response. And so there are also several uh, papers listed here. And while the rest of the presentation is not focused on COVID-19, I did want to mention that. And if you have uh, an organism, a complex organism, that you would like to get a high quality uh, genome assembly for, um, I hope that uh, this um, uh, triggers your interest and, and perhaps um, uh, some of the following uh, work that I will describe will be of interest. I will talk in quite some detail about human genome assemblies and of course, um, understanding the human genome and how it responds to the viruses is very critical. So with that, I'll, I'll, uh, and so I wanted to mention we have a, a web page resource, pacb.com COVID-19, uh, where you can get a lot more information about COVID-19 related uh, research and please everyone stay safe. So with that, I'll start the presentation. Um, I meant you see that there's HIFI reads in the title. And so HIFI reads are both long and accurate sequence reads. And that's really a, a shift in the uh, world that we've been living in, where you have uh, short and accurate, um, let's say, Illumina reads, and then long and noisy reads from PacBio and, and Oxford Nanopore. And about a year ago, uh, we have uh, changed this, this uh, paradigm uh, by virtue of the fact that we can now uh, get very long and also highly accurate um, sequence reads. And the way this is done, is on the upper left, you see a double-stranded piece of DNA. Um, most of you will be familiar with this. Um, you ligate these hairpin adapters, and then the polymerase in smart sequencing uh, opens that structure and uh, goes into a rolling circle synthesis mode, which you can see on the right, uh, which creates these uh, subreads of the forward and the reverse strand. And while those are uh, themselves somewhat noisy, what's important is that the errors that are indicated by the red dots are random. And so you can take a consensus from this um, individual molecule and end up with a HIFI read that we define as a read that's greater than 99% accurate. And so then in the context of the technology evolution that I have um, put here, we've always had these um, so-called so circular consensus sequencing or HIFI reads. However, the read length was not long enough until recently to make that really viable for long inserts. And in the uh, box on the left, you can see that over the course of the last 10 years, we've increased both the throughput by over 10,000 fold, but what's relevant here is the read length by over 100 fold. And so what that means now is that you can really get very long um, polymerase reads that give you um, very powerful HIFI reads. And so specifically since October with the latest um, version two chemistry, we have increased the efficiency of the polymerase going into this rolling circle synthesis, increased the read length even further, thereby increasing the yield of these 99% or greater of uh, Q20 reads, and um, uh, increased the insert size up to right now about 25 kilobases. And so that makes it really useful to consider now beyond targeted sequencing where it's played a role for quite some time, but also now for um, genome assembly. And so all of this happens on this uh, SQL2 system. And uh, you can see here the smart cell 8M, that's the, where the magic happens and the, where the sequencing happens. And we introduced the SQL2 system uh, pretty much exactly a year ago. Uh, and it uh, has higher throughput um, compared to the original SQL system. 
uh, is really tuned to providing these uh, hi-fi, highly accurate long reads. And because of the higher throughput, um, there's reduced uh, time for faster results, again, more affordable and so forth. So in the context of the many applications that can now be completed with just one or two smart cell AMs, what uh, this talk will be focusing on is just the de novo assembly part. And so I mentioned that um, a, a little over a year ago was the first application of this, uh, this new type of read, uh, sequence reads, the hi fi reads to the human genome. A preprint was posted in January um, that uh, described this type of read and showed on the human genome that it is now possible to get high precision and recall for all types of genetic variation, single nucleotide variants, indels, and structure variants. You can phase those variants into haplotypes, access regions in the genome that were pretty previously um, not accessible, uh, for example, in the medical exome, and also uh, the first highly accurate de novo assembly was shown. And so this paper published on the upper left, you can see in Nature Biotechnology, uh, later in 2019. And since then, there have been quite a number of either publications or preprints that I'm showing here that have um, leveraged uh, this new type of sequence data, these hi fi reads. And so um, the latest um, preprint is the one on the right um, from uh, Sergey Korn and Adam Filippi uh, just a few weeks ago. And so this is a very good um, both sort of reflection of where the state of the art is now and also, um, of course, done by a customer. Um, and so it's an independent uh, validation. And so um, this is available, so I'm going to go through this rather quickly. But um, uh, Sergey and Adam and uh, their collaborators observed that Haikanu is capable of generating the most accurate and complete human genome assemblies to date. Uh, on the right, you see a figure where uh, the Haikanu assemblies, um, this is the Haikanu is the assembler that um, Sergey and his colleagues wrote specifically for these hi fi data. And um, you can see on the x axis, the top point there is at about 19 kilobase insert length. Um, we're getting pretty close to the actual theoretical maximum, which is um, the uh, top um, horizontal line there. That's the best you can do in terms of contiguity because there's a limited size of the chromosomes in the human genome, and you can see that it's getting pretty close to that. Um, the paper shows that with regard to repeat resolution, uh, the high canoe assembly um, has the highest level of resolution of these uh, bacterial artificial chromosomes or BACs that are representing segmental duplication. So those are some of the most challenging repeat regions in genomes because they're highly homologous. And there's a direct comparison uh, of the orange and the purple of uh, 30-fold in both cases. Um, uh, in orange is PecBio with Haikanu, and in purple is 30-fold um, of ultra-long nanopore reads. And uh, you can see that for all three genomes, one on the left is a haploid, and the two on the right are diploid genomes, there's much better resolution of these really challenging repeat regions with the HiFi data. And so this is a nice example demonstrating that you can trade uh, read length for accuracy. If your reads become accurate enough, those repeats resolve by themselves, and um, you can get substantially better uh, resolution and quality of the genome assembly. Uh, they looked at other um, repeat types. Um, and found that both uh, canoe and high canoe assemblies of the hi fi data um, consist of four contexts with uh, structural errors in this particular example that's shown on the right. That's the defensin gene cluster um, that plays a role about um, de uh, defense for uh, mi microbials. And you can see in green there, canoe and high canoe um, result that correctly, whereas um, other assemblers or the ONT data have errors which are indicated in red or gaps which are indicated in white. And they looked at other uh, repeat classes, had good recovery of all uh, human repeat classes. Uh, that's shown here on the right. Um, now, here, less is better because here the, these are remaining collapsed spaces, so you want to have as few as possible. And again, in orange, um, the PecBio HiFi data have substantially less compared to, um, for example, the, uh, the, the nanopore data. And then the numbers in the uh, bar uh, in the bars represent the consensus accuracy. So uh, Q55 or greater versus Q27 for nanopore, that's a factor of about 820 fold better with the PecBio hi fi data. There are explicit tables in the paper showing the high quality of greater than Q50 
in the um, in these assemblies. So that's 99.999% accurate or less than one error in 100,000 bases compared to um, other technologies which are substantially more error prone in the final assembly. And um, the quotes uh, down on the bottom um, uh, are taken from the paper to indicate that these assemblies by themselves with just one technology are so accurate that they no longer uh, require polishing of short read data. And actually, the authors discourage uh, polishing because it actually introduces errors during the polishing step. So just with the PECBIO HIFI data alone, you get a complete, a contiguous, and an accurate uh, genome assembly. And um, uh, it was shown, I think that's very exciting, that regions that were previously unsequenceable and, and uh, uh, not unsequenceable, but where not, um, it was not possible to assemble them, are now becoming accessible. So this uh, preprint uh, provides the first preliminary assemblies of nine complete human centromeric regions. And uh, there's one example uh, shown here from a figure in the paper. So uh, again, highlighting that there are microheterogeneities in these highly repetitive regions, and the HIFI data are accurate enough to resolve those and uh, can be used in a de novo assembly context with just one technology to put that together correctly. On the other end of the chromosome, of course, you have telomeres. And um, this is a different paper um, by a preprint by Chris Mason, who specifically looked at telomeres with these HIFI data. And um, this preprint reports the first motif composition maps of human telomeric diplotypes on a multi kilobase scale. So of course, uh, the human genome is diploid, so you have two copies of each chromosome. And what this figure here shows is that the HIFI data are so good and so accurate that you can actually differentiate the telomeres of those two um, uh, uh, chromosomes, from all these chromosomes, uh, the two alleles, uh, which is pre was previously not possible. Uh, Chris Mason also compared um, the two technologies, um, the PECBIO CCS, that's another term for HIFI, um, and the police ion and uh, found that there's um, substantially better quality and resolution and the correct assignment and um, uh, resolution and characterization of the telomeres compared to the uh, uh, other long read technology. So in the following, I want to tell you a little bit more about how this, how this looks in practice. And um, I'm using an example of an ongoing collaboration and work that was really led by Tina Lindsay, Bob Fulton, Ira Hall, and Chris Markovich from the McDonald Genome Institute from Washington University. Um, Tina gave a talk at the AGBT conference, and uh, uh, some of the slides um, uh, that she presented um, I want to share with you here as well. So this is on a well-characterized um, human genome, NA19240, which is a Yoruban, an African genome. And so they sequenced, um, and here is a representative example of the sequencing performance. On the left, you see um, the raw reads. Um, you, so you see most of the data is from polymerase reads that are now in excess of 200,000 bases. And so that allows you to generate very high quality and, and long HIFI reads. That's in the middle. Um, the average insert length of the DNA fragments is about 18 kilobases. And on the right is the read quality. So the x-axis there is the accuracy. So Q20 on the left and Q30, Q40 and so forth, and the number of reads. And so these, these uh, statistics graphs are, are nice, but they don't really reflect very well uh, what a HIFI read really looks like. So what I thought I would do is show you one. And uh, so what I've done here is taken an average uh, or the, from, the, from the mode of both of these distributions. You can see that on the upper right. So I took an 18 kilobase read that has the, a typical accuracy, which is about Q35. And I've just printed it here. And so this is the whole read, 18,342 bases. And um, you can predict uh, from the number of, of turns and number of um, uh, times the polymerase went around the smart cell uh, what the accuracy of that read would be. And the predicted QV is 35. And so now we can map that read against the de novo assembly and ask, you know, what, what, was that a good prediction and what's the right answer? And we find that um, out of those um, 18,342 bases, 18,336 were correct. And there were six errors, which are indicated by the red uh, little triangles. And that computes to 99.967% accurate for this particular high fi read, QV 34.85. So that's, that's right on the money. So, so you can see that 
uh, there's in these high fire reads thousands of bases and stretches that are perfectly accurate and uh, there are only very few errors remaining and that really I, I hope visualizes a little bit better the power that you can use this new type of data of long and accurate sequence reads for the noble assembly. And so they ran four smart cells um, because they wanted to oversample to see how that um, would look with regard to the uh, coverage requirements. You can see it's quite uh, steady and robust, about 1.6 to 1.8 million uh, HIFI reads, about tenfold coverage of the human genome. I mentioned 18 kb, and the, mo the median quality is Q30. We have made improvements that I quickly want to mention about the compute times and the uh, um, assemblers that can be used. Uh, so there's now a dedicated Falcon um, assembler that is optimized for sequence accuracy, phasing accuracy, and speed using modern tools. And so then here's the result. And so you can pause and read the numbers in detail, but um, the summary is a very high quality genome assembly with almost 30 megabase contig and 50, correct genome size. And what I do want to highlight is the second column of haplotypes. So 87% of this genome was separated into the two haplotypes. So this is going to the notion that the human genome size is not three gigabases, but six gigabases, because you have two copies. And obviously, they're not the same. One is from the mother and one is from the father. And um, this is going very close to completely uh, resolving and characterizing both alleles separately and getting a much better picture of the biological reality of what is inside a cell and that six gigabases of sequence and not three. And so here's an example of how clean the data looks. Um, you can see in this IGB shot, um, each row is an individual HIFI read. Uh, they're grouped into the two alleles. So the upper panel is the, um, you know, one of the alleles. And you can see um, in this purple with the numbers, um, that there is a heterozygous deletion. I think it's 502 base pairs. Um, and so uh, you can see uh, how nicely the both heterozygous and homozygous SNPs are um, apparent, how uh, clean the data is, and how well they're phased. Um, the last thing I want to mention is the compute requirements are much reduced with HiFi data. Um, here's, a, again, a, a busy table that I wish uh, encourage you to pause, and then you can look at all these numbers. But in a nutshell, only 14% of the input file size because the HiFi data are already um, uh, highly accurate. And then in terms of the overall uh, compute time and the disk usage, uh, much reduced uh, compute requirements. And so that makes the assemblies faster. You don't need as much expense and time um, with disk uh, storing the data and so forth. I mentioned that the researchers um, uh, sequenced for smart cells, and so they wanted to see when the performance really plateaus. And so you can, we uh, ran assemblies for one, two, three, and four cells included in the data. And you can see that at about, uh, with two cells, you already get a really good assembly with 22 megabase contig and 50, the correct genome size. And then you get a little bit more. Um, if you want to really um, get, go to the max, three cells is sufficient. There's really very marginal improvement after that. But two cells already give you, a, if you want to balance a budget and quality, two cells um, gives you a really nice assembly. And then lastly, on the human side, I want to mention that we are um, working on uh, more advanced assemblers. Um, and my colleagues at Cronenberg and his colleagues um, had a blog post that's on the bottom. I uh, encourage you to check out. Um, we are working on new assemblers that directly include the phasing in the assembly string graph so that avoids one round of an assembly and it's faster. And he's got very encouraging results already for Drosophila and um, uh, is now extending that to humans. So that was on de novo assembly on the human side. And so now I want to talk a little bit about plant and animal sequencing. And so for that, we have to go all the way back because um, while it's fairly straightforward to get samples and to get good quality DNA for human samples, it's much more challenging for the wide um, variety of sample types and tissue types and the biodiversity um, with um, animals and plants. And so um, to, help, to try to help the community, we have looked at the available literature on DNA extraction protocols that have published in conjunction with PEC biosequencing. We put those on a website called uh, extractdnaforpecbio.com. Um, and so this is uh, a, just a resource of links. 
and the links directly point to the method. So they don't go to the top of the paper uh, when available. They go directly to the method section, and so you click on it, and so there's the sample extraction in this case for the puffer fish and so forth. Um, so if you have any protocols that work really well for you and that you would like to contribute to this uh, site, please email on the bottom you see there, extractdna at pacb.com. And also, if you have any questions or feedback, um, please contact us. Um, other than that, with regard to library prep updates, uh, HiFi is now the new standard for all genome projects. Um, and because, oops, excuse me, because we have found um, that it gives higher quality compared to the previous um, uh, CLR mode with regard to contiguity, completeness, and correctness. Uh, there's one library prep for all of the HiFi workflows. It's called the Express Template Prep Kit 2.0. And um, we realized that some organisms are small. So last year we collaborated with uh, Mar Lonisak and uh, Matt Berryman from the Sanger Institute and developed a low input protocol that goes down to about 100 nanograms and uh, is then available for uh, insects in particular. And uh, Mark Laxter, who heads the Darwin Tree of Life um, program at the Sanger Institute, uh, presented this at the uh, PAG conference uh, showing 44 new butterfly effect bio assemblies. His talk was recorded, and the link is down on the bottom here, uh, all with uh, much better quality than what had been previously done in Lepidoptera. Um, also at PAG, there was a um, high fi assembly of the tetraploid rose by Barton Island from Gene Twister. Um, and this is just a slide. Again, the talk is recorded, and it's on the bottom, uh, showing the difference between the short read assemblies with lumen on the top where it's really difficult to um, uh, resolve the four alleles, um, uh, rows is tetraploid, whereas on the bottom you can see how clearly you can group uh, the different alleles into their, um, the reads into the four different alleles, and you can see all the variation, the heterozygous SNPs and the structure variants uh, really nicely. And then we were quite uh, amazed, Kevin Fangler, I was really uh, adventurous and courageous and applied HIFI reads to the 11 gigabit oat genome. Uh, that was much bigger than what we would have um, attempted at the time. And uh, you can see from the screenshot that um, was taken a PAG, uh, 20 megabase contact in 50 with just eight smart cells, 22 full coverage. Uh, so really quite amazing. And so uh, inspired by, by his presentation and by Sergey Korn's preprint and so forth, uh, we then embarked and wanted to see how well HiFi data could do on a really uh, large uh, genome. So we um, selected the California Redwood Genome Project, um, and my colleagues, uh, Michelle, um, uh, led by Michelle Vieira, uh, went out to Stanford, collected some leaves, and within 17 days um, generated a PacBio HiFi assembly that was substantially better and much faster. Uh, you can see on the table here, the first column, are the metrics for the, uh, for the PAC bio hi fi assembly, and the middle column is the same coverage uh, a nanopore assembly um, supplemented with 124 coverage of short reads. Um, that took five to six months, whereas our assembly was done in six days, and uh, the um, uh, contiguity is um, almost 20 fold better, uh, and so forth. So we were very pleased and um, uh, demonstrated that you can do this um, hi fi paradigm coordinate assembly really a very complex and very large genomes now. And then uh, we realized that um, for some organisms are even smaller and you can't even get 100 nanograms from single individuals, which are much preferred for the novo assembly. And so we have an ultra low DNA input workflow that um, goes to about five nanograms of samples. This is currently in early access. It does require some application. And uh, we have some kits. Um, we are in early access. If you're interested, you can get in touch with us. And uh, we can see whether we, after the pandemic and the world opens again, um, whether we can uh, work together on testing this. We have collaborated with um, researchers from Notre Dame and UC Davis, demonstrating that this can be done uh, very nicely on a very tiny fly, a single sand fly, starting with five nanograms, getting to an assembly that you can see on the right as a contact in 50 or greater than a megabase, um, and good completeness and uh, contiguity and accuracy as well. Um, I just want to mention that for the human, uh, for something like cancer needle biopsies, for example, um, uh, this also might be of interest where you only have a few cells and only five nanograms. Uh, and this is a comparison of the PEC bio ultra low to the standard protocol. It's a little bit worse, but still pretty good in terms of 
um, recalling and um, with precision with regard to single nucleotide polymorphisms in DELT and structure variants. So even in some cases where the organism is large, um, circumstances like a needle biopsy may dictate that you only get very uh, few uh, nanograms of DNA, so this protocol might be uh, of interest in the, those uh, contexts as well. And then we have a very exciting additional collaboration also with the Sanger Institute, Chris Bomer, who is here on the right. Um, and we started collaborating. He's interested in very tiny flatworms uh, that he collected. On the left, you can see the River Cam just behind the Sanger Institute. And what's really amazing is that um, uh, on the picture on the right is the actual individual that uh, was sequenced with the protocol that he developed. Um, so now this is much lower. This is about 100 picograms or so. And um, he did the extraction of the DNA, ran his protocol, and then it was sequenced at the Sanger Institute, and we um, worked together on the assembly. And for this little critter, uh, the Contigen 50 was also um, over one megabase. So really quite uh, remarkable. I'm very grateful that uh, Chris allows me to uh, present um, uh, the results of this collaboration. So the redwood, one of the very largest species, and this is getting to pretty small uh, eukaryotes uh, as well. Um, everything can be covered really nicely for high-quality genome assemblies uh, using PicBio. So with that, um, I, I was talking about DNA and genome assembly. In the last two minutes, I just want to mention that, of course, um, your genome is only uh, as good as you can then annotate it. And for that, um, our isoseq method in the RNA sequencing realm is very powerful and has been used extensively. Uh, for those of you who don't know what isoseq is, full-length RNA sequencing, you can read about the uh, characteristics here. We now have updated kits that make this easy, um, fast, um, reduced input requirements and reduced costs. And uh, with the increased throughput of the SQL2 system, uh, in many cases, you only need one smart cell run to fully characterize the uh, transcriptome structure. In this case, you see the uh, curved plateau for the human transcriptome. Uh, and then there are other tools to phase um, the uh, transcripts into their respective alleles or even detect um, epigenetic modifications on the RNA, which is shown on the bottom right. There's a paper there. So this has been used quite extensively um, for many uh, plant and animal and also human examples. I'm just showing a few here, uh, looking at allele-specific isoform expression, tissue-specific isoform expressions, uh, answering specific questions about um, biosynthetic capabilities, for example, in cannabis, or hibernation for the grizzly bear. So there are a lot of papers. Uh, check out our website um, on ISOSEQ if you're interested. And it's a very powerful tool to annotate your genomes. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining this talk. Um, and I uh, understand you can uh, email um, you know, or, or submit questions, and then they will be emailed, and I'll be very happy to be in touch and answer those, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.